So welcome to the Wednesday webinar. I'm Maureen Zarba. Some of you are still coming in. Uh, a couple of you raised your hands. You're muted, as you know, when you take the Wednesday we webinars, but you can type in the chat. Uh, type in the chat. I think that's the best thing for me to do in case you have any questions. And hopefully everybody can hear me and everybody can see me. So I have Ethan out there who will let me know, right? If you can't hear me or see me. So, okay, so we still have a couple of people. It is 12.01, so I'm gonna get started. Again, I'm Maureen Zarba, Technology Training Manager, and I'm, I'm doing the webinar on Stratus Highlights. I thought that would be a good New Year's webinar because we have so many new agents coming in and they don't really know what's happening with Stratus, what is Stratus, and also all of our agents are welcome to these kinds of webinars because it's a great refresher, right? So we recording in progress. You should be able to see my PowerPoint screen, which has the objectives of what I'm gonna cover. And let me just go over a few things if you haven't taken this webinar before. You are all muted and we don't see your screen because you're not getting CE for the class, which is fine. So you can be in your pajamas and watch the webinar. Also, um, you will be getting the recording from this, which is great. So you can watch it as many times as you want. And is there anything else I forgot about that? Oh, if you have any questions, just put it into the chat. Periodically, I'll check them for you and, and I'll wait at the end and answer some questions for you. Again, um, so what we're gonna cover in this, it's only one hour. So an hour goes really fast. You're not going to be learning Stratus in an hour. What I wanted to do with this webinar is to show you the highlights, um, the important parts of, of the program. And I encourage, especially new agents out there to take a class on Stratus where we have in-person classes and we have Zoom classes. So whatever your preference is, you can, probably, you can see them usually on the Stratus News or LI Realtor for those types of things. And I also put my email next to my picture. So you wanna write it down. This way you can email me if you'd like to ask me any questions. Um, I'm not the help center, but uh, I'll be happy to assist you if I can, okay? So bring in the new year with Stratus Highlights for new agents and any agents for that matter with Laureen Zarba and that's me. And the bullet points kind of cover what I'm going to do. And we're going to be just kind of scooting around showing you what Stratus does. That's basically what it is. And if you don't know what Stratus is, Stratus is our MLS system, okay? It is not our MLS. One key is the MLS. Um, Stratus is the, the way we put our listings in, the way we communicate with our clients, customers, buyers, sellers, whatever. We do CMAs in there. Uh, we merged to become one key in 2019 and the Hudson Gateway area, which is upstate, do not use Stratus, just so you know. They use a program called Matrix. That's their MLS system. So that's why some of the things in Stratus changed. If you have been an agent for a while and you go, what happened? After the pandemic, everything changed in there. So for the new agents, they won't know the difference because it looks all the same to them. But I'm going to show you um, easy ways to navigate. So let me get started. Um, we're going to go through customizing the info center, which is like your dashboard. Um, every program has uh, like a home base, and it's the info center in Stratus. We're going to, I'm going to show you how to set up your market area so that you can check to see what new listings and changes to listings that are happening in your market. And you should always be on top of that um, because you know your consumers out there, they probably know a lot more than us sometimes. We are gonna run an update. That's something you, a lot of the agents will do it periodically through the day. They'll do it in the morning, maybe run an update in the afternoon and see what changed uh, or what came on the market. You don't wanna miss anything. So that's a really great thing too, running an update. We're gonna do a few property searches on and off the market. Uh, what's on the market, what's for sale, and then what, sold. That's probably what I'll have the time to do, a couple of those with you. Emailing, printing, and we have different report styles. Again, I'm going to reiterate because you know I always do that, is that this is not really a training session. I have to tell myself that too. 
it's really just kind of show you the highlights and stratus. That's what um, this webinar is all about. Creating a prospect search, which we used to call a prospect match, where you can automatically email listings to anybody that you want. Great way to start that communication process, especially with your buyers. Um, the comparative market analysis, which is a CMA. I have one already set up, but I'm going to just show you a little bit what it looks like in there. And um, that's usually what you, you bring to a seller to come up with a price. That's I'm sure you've heard of CMAs before. There are other ones out there also. Um, and lastly, we're going to do adding a listing. So I'm going to show you how to add a listing. Because now, and even the pop-up on, on the Stratus News is saying we must attach the listing to the public records. It's not an option anymore. And they will automatically find you if you don't do that. So it's um, I'll go through that. How do you attach your listing to the public record? And then at the end, I give you I, I show you where you can get some help and I'll answer some questions. All right, I have. I have 55 chats. <laughs> I can't read all of these. You just saw some of the agents just like to say hello. Uh, is there a map or list of what counties? Yes, yes, we have all of that. Hello, good afternoon, or a lot of hellos. Thank you. I'm getting thank yous already. I haven't even done anything. All right, let's um let's go. And you know what's nice is that it's free. And again, if you came in a little after I started talking, this is recorded. And you are going to get an email with the recording. So isn't that kind of nice? You don't have to remember everything. You don't have to write it down. You don't have to do any of that. So let me get into my Stratus screen. And it, whoops, I have it open already. Here it is. Now, whether you're a new agent or not, it's always good to take these webinars and courses. So I am in Stratus right now. And Use Chrome whenever you're logging into any of our programs, especially Stratus or any of them, okay? So you're not going to use any other browser but Chrome. Another thing with Stratus is it does not respond to the back button. So don't use the back button. Uh, it just gets weirded out, so you don't want to do that. So here is my info center. If you're new, and a lot of you are here because you are new agents, you're going to have this sidebar. See this sidebar here, which is really kind of great because you can see where everything is. You're like, oh my gosh, where is Ed Edit, where I put my listings in? Or where is the CMA button? Or where's public records? So this is here. It almost looks like Outlook, but you can toggle it. See this little circle here to the top where these functions go across. Now I'm on my home, my work computer, so it's big. But when I'm home, I have a MacBook that's like this big. So that sidebar, actually takes up a lot of space when I'm looking at my listing. So you can have it here or you can toggle it to the top, okay? So that's the first thing. My screen's gonna look like this. All right, um, with, like a, this is a brief overview. Um, in your info center, you have this quick search over here. And it's a great search if you don't have a lot of criteria. So you wanna just put in a town, for instance, We'll just do, um, I do patch hog. Now, you notice how I type the town in. That's how I do it. I just start typing the town because we have so many towns now. You can click the gear next to this and look at all the towns if you didn't know how to spell something and check the boxes. But I only do that when I have to. I just type the town in here. If you're using this quick search over here, you have a count of 32 way down the bottom left hand corner. It's really, really tiny. Um, it's 32 listings. These are houses. And then I press submit and I will get my listings. Okay. Now, the listings and the count will be here now are in price order. So they are in default by the lowest price to the highest price. So you can see there's a 289 priced house here. And this here is very important is last status change. So that anything that changes to the listing would be here. These are new listings, price changes back on the market, a whole bunch of last status changes for those. If you don't have the pictures and you probably don't have the pictures next to your listings because Stratus doesn't give them to you unless you turn them on, I will show you how to put them on, okay? So that you have that, you will always have that 
on there. So let me go back to the info center for a second. Um, so that's a quick search. You know, it, like I said, if you have a lot of criteria in this market, I wouldn't put a lot of criteria because there's not a lot of listings. Uh, here's the news items that come up here. Here are today's listings. Now, if you're brand new and you don't have this set up, this is your homework. You're going to do today's listings today. Okay, you're going to set them up. Um, most of us have this set up and you'll put your towns in. And I'm always changing mine because I'm always training. But see, it says today. So I have zero for all of these towns except for Babylon is one new listing because they haven't put them in yet. So maybe in an hour, I might see a one here. I might see some, it changes automatically. This is a live system, okay? It's always inputting new listings, status changes, updates. So everything changes in here as we go. And this will show you what's happening. Now with today's listings, I can go back up to a month. So, or maybe a week, I can go back seven days. And then I can see in Riverhead, I have four new listings, 27 updates. Updates are changes to your listings, okay? Anything that's changed, even if they put in um, an extra word, that's an update. If they put an open house in, that's an update. They add another photo, that's an update. So those are the type of things or they do a status change, maybe it goes under contract, which is pending. Now, whatever towns, and these things can be dragged, you know that? Um, whatever towns you have in your market area will be, and I will show you how to put them in, not to worry, will be in the open house area. So, wow, there's a lot of open houses. It's gonna be a pretty nice weekend. So you'll probably see, now today's Wednesday, these numbers might change. But you can just click, like Massapequa has 16 open houses. I can see when they are. I can see what time they are. And then I can also, a lot of agents don't notice this. There's a calendar here for your open house. These can be printed if you want to, especially as the weather gets nicer, you'll see. Well, we're only in January, but you know, some we have nice, some nice days coming up. So that's in your info center. Um, and I'll show you how to set this up in a second. I have like a hundred chats in here. <laughs> you can't see my screen. Ethan, can you see my screen? We can't see the screen. Ethan, can you see my screen? Hello? Oh, he's mute. I, I can't, he can't audio in there. Hold on a second. Can you see my screen now? Somebody just answered the chat. Yes. Well, I'm supposed to have somebody out there to tell me that there's no, my, you couldn't see my screen. I apologize. So here we are. So you couldn't see any of that. All right. What I did was I put a town in here. <clears throat> I did patch up. And then I pressed submit. And then I showed the listings. Now the photos need to be activated. So I'm going to show you that, um, how to activate them. I don't know why you don't get the photos, but they're not there uh, by default with Stratus. So this is kind of convenient search. They added this in in this version. News here, market areas. Um, here's your open houses over here, so that if you you know wanted to see, yeah, this is what you missed the open houses. Here's the open houses, and you can put them on a map. You only no the calendar. You only get the calendar <clears throat> when there is the open houses. Otherwise, you don't see them for listings or anything like that. All right, over on the right, one last thing in here, one key links. Uh, this really important things to a lot of the programs that you have available to you, like Collab, Instanet, the online form program, RPR, Remind. These are all free programs. A lot of cool things here you have quick links to. Um, if you want to set up your market areas, 
you're going to go into settings. So let me show you settings, especially since this was designed for new agents. In here, the first thing that I have my classes do is to put in the, their cell phone number. And you have to put the dashes in and make sure you say sell, I agree, and you save because when you print out any reports, they will now have your cell phone number on it. Otherwise they didn't before, they only had the work number. So you wanna do that. You wanna upload your photo. So you do that, you're responsible for uploading whatever photo you want in here. So you're branded. The market areas is what I was showing you with the open houses and the updates. So there are six here. This really goes back to the beginning old stratus was like this. The way it works is I'll put a town in here. Um, let's say I do Huntington. Huntington. Now what happens is they just think that since they typed Huntington, they're getting Huntington. No, okay, that's only a label. Because you could say North Shore, my area, zip code. Um, you need to come over here and put the town in again. And I'm just typing an H. I can do an H U, H H U, Huntington. Here it is. Or you can click on multiple towns and check as many as you want in here. So three things to do in your market areas: label it, check at least one box, and put a town in. When you press save, if it yells at you because it will if you forget something. You'll say market area two missing something, then you would go over and check that. So I'll do one more in here. I suggest doing one town in each market area until you get started with this and get used to your market. Uh, Long Beach I'll do because that has a lot of condos. I, I want to do condos for that and I have Long Beach and then save. Anybody have questions on that? Let me just look. All right, so that is um, market areas here. So when you put the market areas in, you're gonna go to the info center and you'll see, see how I changed it to Huntington here in there. Um, there's no new listings and there's four updates, okay? If you say, now remember this is recorded. I'm sorry about the beginning part. I was supposed to be um, told if my screen wasn't even showing, but. Usually I do a lot of webinars, but something happened when I had that PowerPoint thing up there. But over here is your open houses too. So edit market areas is the button that will take you right to the market areas so that you can change it. So what did Maureen say? I don't remember. Edit market areas, see? And it takes me right to that spot. So that little button will take you right here so that you can start thinking about what towns you want to put in so that you can keep an eye on new listings and changes to listings and everything that's going on with the listings in those areas, okay? The only other thing that I think is important for you right now is in appearance, this box here, show thumbnail photos if you want the little pictures on the side of your listings, okay? Check that. Yours won't be checked by default in Stratus. Um, if you can check that, you'll get the little thumbnails. Most people like that. Make sure you press save. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me go to the info center again. And let me pick um, these four listings here. These pictures, see these little pictures here? So in settings, appearance, you're gonna check the box and to get the pictures. Okay, all right, let me, let me keep an eye on you guys. Okay, cool. All right, so settings is very important to set your default, your pictures, your phone numbers, your market areas, all right? The rest of that at the end, you don't, you don't need to know that yet. So, Another really important thing that you will need once you set up your market areas is running an update. Now running an update, agents tell me, well, they have their coffee in the morning, they run their update and they check their market. It's like reading the newspaper for you. That's how it's compared to. 
So the update is located. Now we have a button for it down here, go to update, which you might miss, or you can go to listings update. You see right here, update this one. And these are my market areas that I was just showing you. And these would be your market areas. So if you're in Queens and you have your, you know, your towns in here or your zip codes, whatever way that you want to search, you can, let's say I have Bayside in here. I want to see what's happening in my update for there. I submit it. Let me go back. Hold on a second. Update. Let me go back. Couple of days. All right. So I did Bayside because that was in my market area. So there's two new listings here. And this one had massive people. Massive people come two coming soon. To one price change, and I'm getting that from over here. I see this price change uh, back on the market, pendings, expires, temporarily off the market. These three are sold, and so on. Now, what happens is you go, Oh, wow, these are two new listings here. I, I think I know this house. If you click on the MLS number in your update, it will open up the listing for you, which is really cool because it doesn't look like a link, the MLS number, it's not blue, but it will open it up. Now, without hitting the back button, how do you get back to your update? It, it's weird, I know, it says return to previous page, should say return to update, and then it'll take me right back to my update, okay? And then you might check this after lunch because something new might've came on the market and so on. If I run the same update in a minute from now, you're gonna come up with nothing because probably nothing happened in your town in that last minute. So where did I find that? It's listings update. Yeah, let me pick, let me pick um, Long Beach, let's see. See, I have today here. It'll tell me what happened today. I'll probably go back a day and then I submit. This can be printed if you want to take it. If you're a paper person, you want to take it with you, you can see what's changing. These are probably one of the best things in Stratus from the beginning, you know, is the market area and checking your update. All right, let me see what you guys are saying in here. How do I look up expired? Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm not doing that yet. Okay, um, update. All right, where am I? All right, so let's do a search. Well, I'll show you the searches. So that's your info center, a lot going on in here and set it up the way you wanted to set up. Make sure you put your market areas in here and you can just click this button, edit market areas, which your panel might be in a different place. It might be down here, right? In the open housing. Now, listing search. I always say I was teaching a Learn Stratus class yesterday. To me, this is so important, probably one of the most important things, because if you don't know how to search for listings, you can't work with your buyers, you can't proper, comp properties for your sellers, you can't find properties for yourself. So you want to spend some time in here looking for listings, okay? Um, I usually use this one here, especially to start. Um, this one has, these are your houses, your residential. Then you have your condo co-op and homeowner associations, your rental, land, and commercial. You got a little bit of everything, right? Right now it's on houses. Just a bit of advice. If you're looking, say, for condos or co-ops, if you click on that box, uncheck houses. Otherwise, it takes you into a flex search and it's just weird. You have to add things to it. You'll know it when you see it. So it works best, Stratus, if you're using one property type at a time. Available means they are on the market. They are for sale. See, they're on market. Unavailable is off the market, like expires, like pendings, which are under contract, closed, withdrawn, released. Anything off the market is unavailable. And then public is MLS and private may be office exclusives. Um, only your office would see. So I'm not doing anything. I'm not changing a thing here. So let's let's search, okay? Let's search. Let's check it out. 
All right, so this is your search screen. Up here kind of tells you what you picked. Because when I teach in person classes, I can watch that. Here's your towns. When you search in Stratus, you are going to search by town, zip, zone, or county. Okay, one of those four. If you're from Queens, we find the best way to search in Queens is in zip codes. Just seems to work out better, especially in public records. Uh, and here is your search screen, which I'm going to get you comfortable with. We're going to search a town. Remember, see how I do it? I'm doing Syosset. I did SY and then click on it. Then I could put another town in if I wanted to put Woodbury in or something else. I could just type Woodbury. Okay, and it would come up, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pick that one. Now the count, love, love, love the count. I got 39 listings. Our market is a little low on the supply, still, still a little low. Um, so that means what the supply means the amount of properties that are for sale out there, right? So 39 houses in Syosset. So we don't, in a market like this, I don't put a lot of criteria in for a buyer because if they want central era, they want fireplace, they want this, they want that, they want, we're going to get nothing, okay? So we just kind of put in like the price range and stuff like that in here. Let's just show you where that stuff is. If you're putting a price range in, you already have three zeros in Stratus. You see that? I know. I don't know. They never asked me. I'm not sure why they put that in there, but they did. So if you're looking for a price range from 500, let's say 500, let's take a million. And it always comes up in red. I don't know. You didn't do anything wrong. 500 to a million. I have nine now. See? In here. Uh, they need at least three bedrooms. So I put the bare minimum in if I'm searching for somebody. I only got five, down to five. And then you could press submit. You see them? And here they are. So it goes from the least expensive to the most expensive. Last status change. Here's your bedrooms, bathrooms. And if I scroll over, Number F, just so you know, means families, okay? These are all one family houses and they only all have one kitchen. That's what the K means. And your MLS number is way, way, way at the beginning, okay? Now you can drag your MLS number to the beginning. Don't you love that? So I can see it. If you want to, you can drag things around. There's a lot you can do in here. We can customize, I can add things, but... <clears throat> We'll just leave it like this for now. Um, when we look at a listing, I hope, look at the one I picked. Oh, yeah, yeah. I picked that was a foreclosure. <clears throat> How do I know that was a foreclosure? Well, I just guessed, but then when I came down here, okay, let me show you. Oh, this isn't a foreclosure. REO means real estate owned, which means foreclosure. So it says no, not a foreclosure but they took a picture through the fence. You know, let's look at this house. So when we're looking at a listing, um, let me just point out some important details like taxes, which we don't like looking at, but here's your MLS number, here's the taxes. Here is the year built. Always looking at that, that's where that is. Um, the lot size, directions, this one took the time to put directions in, I love that. The public remarks, which you have at least 2,000 characters, so you have a lot more space than you think to write a good property description in your listings. I always suggest putting in word first and then spell checking. This is new down. Oh, I forgot something important. Our, we have schools now that are in here. So when we link with the public record, which I'm going to show you, you it will put in the school district, it will put in the junior high and the high school in but it won't put the elementary school in. You'll have to find out what that is, okay? So that's kind of great for a buyer if they are looking, if they're interested in schools for their kids. And levels is new in here. Um, this one's having an open house down here on the 14th. And here's the broker information, okay? So this is called a broker full. And you can you know go to the next one. 
the next one. I'm gonna stay on this one for a minute. You guys okay? I got two chats in here. What is the walk score? What was the other thing? Let me see what else you got in here. Find a lot of rental issues. Most updates. Yeah, you're gonna find a lot of issues with all these listings. The walk score, somebody asked me about the walk score. We got this years ago. It just happened to come up on a listing. It will tell you and it will tell your consumers where all the restaurants are near this house, where the bars are, where the parks are, where the schools are, um, where the shops are. And, you know, and that's something when you email a listing, which I'm going to show you, they can click on the walk score and then go to the map and it will show them all the things that are near them. Consumers love that. They just love that stuff. So that's what it is. So if they ask you, you know, is there any shops by this house or is there any restaurants by this house? Tell them to click on the walk score when they get the listing. So when we email or print a listing for, let's say, a customer, do we give them the broker full? No, we do not give them the broker full. Because you have all this information down here, you have the other, you have the broker, their phone numbers, you have commissions. Absolutely, do not give them that. This is only for you. You have choices in here. Now I can't hear you, but I know what you're saying. This is what we suggest. Now we used to suggest years ago that you give the client full. However, we suggest now the the customer full. Okay. And I know you're asking, what's the difference? First of all, a client, and I'm not gonna get into it too much, is somebody who signed a contract with you, like the buyer exclusive buyer broker agreement. That means you know, they signed a contract to work exclusively with you. The customers didn't sign a contract and a lot of them don't want to, so they can go with anybody. So what's the difference? Let me show you. If I was showing houses, to a customer, I would do a customer full with photos. This is what I would give them. This is what I print out if I was showing listings. What it does, let me show it to you. It takes out the broker, the commission, the phone numbers, and it puts the photos in. What's different about this report as compared to the client full, the client will give them open houses. Now this house especially had an open house, if they don't sign anything with you, you're giving them open houses that they can go to by themselves. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be really careful with that because then the agent over there might pick them up as a client. And it also doesn't give them price changes and changes of dates. It gives them less, okay? Put it that way. This is a really safe one to give out. Plus it's nice. I always say, get a clipboard, Put your listings in when you're showing a house, be organized and let them, you know, write their little notes down. Now, um, here, before I show you how to print, let me go over here. We have other types of reports in here. Uh, I always show my flyer because I, not my flyer, but I love this flyer. It is a flyer too, one of my favorites. It has a picture of the house with thumbnails down the side, and then your picture's at the bottom with your cell phone number because you put it in in settings and your logo. So this can be emailed, this can be printed, this can be given to a buyer. I've seen this at open houses. Isn't that kind of nice? Um, they have other ones in here too. They have a flyer that looks like this. So play around with these and see what you have. Once you get familiar with this, you leave it on a broker full because you want to see everything. Okay. You are, you get everything because you're a realtor. You get it all, everything, the member. So what you do when you print is you go over here to print and you print out a broker full for you. And then maybe a customer full with photos because you like that for them. Right. So it prints out one for you, one for them, all in one print. Love that. Okay, any questions on that? Let me look. Let me look. Different between consumer and customer. Not much difference between consumer and customer, but the, the, the consumer doesn't have, 
the consumer doesn't have a full page. That's the big difference there. Okay, that's the big difference. Um, if you want a full one, you want a customer full. That's what you want with that. So on the right, this is where you print. This is where you email listings. Here's where you, you put an email in here. Here's the weird part, pointing this out right away. Down here, it defaults to a client full no address. So we really don't want that. It should be a customer full. So make sure that you check that out in there. I don't know why, oopsie. I don't know why that's, that's in there like that, but it is, okay. And then you have a download button. Now to get back to all the listings, real important, there's two ways, never the back button and never listings. You want to hit either results or list. See, it looks like a list here. And that's how you get back to all your listings. Got it? So this button here is for one view. This is for your list. This is for your map. When you want to see where they all are on the map, you can do this. I point to them. These are red. That means they're for sale and stratus. And then to get back, I click on the list. Alrighty. Let me go back and do another one. Listing search. Let's do a search. Um, let's do a sold, okay? So how do you find solds in your town? You're going to do unavailable and uncheck available. Unavailable, uncheck available. Remember, this is recorded so that you have this. So you want to try it for your own town. And then I put in a town. I do usually do a big town, Asapequa. Now, the thing is, this big number is to, up to two years ago. Now you want to see what recently sold to see what's happening in a market. You don't want to see two years ago. So you want to come down here into a title date and go back six months, one, two, three, four, five, six. I use T dates, but I don't want to explain it right now. Six months ago was July 1st. Look, there's a lot of houses that sold in six months in that's a peak with 290. Title date, if you don't see it down there, you either didn't pick unavailable or you didn't uncheck available, okay? You go, where is the title date? I did unavailable. You need to uncheck available in there. And sold's really important when we're checking our market. I like to see the list price. Like there's still, some of these medium price markets are still getting overpriced, like the second one, right? Was on the market for three sixty nine, sold for four fifteen. Let me let me make this bigger so you can see it. Right, um, this guy went down a little. This guy got his money. This guy went down a teeny bit. This guy went up. So depends upon the market. Here's a button. Now look at the toolbars when you're working. It is your calculator? I love this statistics because it'll give me the median prices, which is this number. Six hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars. Six hundred and sixty-seven five hundred thousand. It's they're selling in twenty-five days. This is what's sold, and you can print this. And your name, cell phone number, office will be on the bottom of that. It's called statistics. I I usually show this when I'm doing my CMAs. Um, and you can put these all on the map. See where they are. I don't know why that guy ran away from home. He's way up there. Sometimes that happens. And they're all blue because they're sold in here. Uh, somebody asked me to do an expired, so I will. Um, that is also unavailable and uncheck available. Expired you want to find because you might get a listing out of it, especially if you're new, okay? You want to get some listings, right? You want to generate some business, you want to make some money. Um, so you can put in, I'll do a zip code. I did unavailable. And now the last status change, you need to put in expires. That means the listing ran out, okay? It, it ran out, the listing date came up, However, they can be relisted, so you must be really, really careful with that. I usually go back a couple of months with expired dates because I just don't want one six months ago. I like new ones, okay? Now you can save a search here if you'd like to save your expireds. 
or just submit them. So these are potential leads for you. Now, when we open one up, how do we know? There's a couple of ways. How do we know if it's relisted? See, I'm using these hours to move around. Um, I can check their public record. The one that's really, really, really close here, you can click on that public record. And I usually look down at the bottom at the listing history. And up here, it would have a new listing and it doesn't. They were in list pendants. That means they were behind in their mortgage. Uh, this might be a really good lead for you, especially if they're in list pendants. They might want to sell their house. And that's what you do. You go through each one, check the public record, see if it's relisted. This one isn't relisted like that. Um, we have carts up here. I don't have a lot of time to show you this, but if you want to save things in your shopping cart, you can create a cart that might say expired, you know, and then you could just put them into the cart like that. And later in the day, go through the expireds then. And this is a great thing that Stratus put in here because that we used to put things in favorites. I could never find anything. Um, at least with the cart. So like folders, you create the folders that you want and then you just put in the listings so that you have them, okay? So that's your expires. Your carts are located over here in my list. So if I wanna see what's in a listing card, I can open them up from here. Now, where am I with that? Okay, any questions so far with that? I gotta thank you. You're welcome. What's the difference between unavailable and archived? Oh, that's such a great question, Michael. Oh my goodness. I, gosh, I need so much time with you. All right. He asked, Michael asked me, what's the difference between unavailable and archives? Archives light up when you click on unavailable. And this is a cool way to investigate a property. You will not get anything that's off the market past two years unless you go to the archives. So say you have your house and you wanna see how many times your house was listed in the MLS. It's only gonna go back two years unless you go to the archives. So in my class, I usually call up the, like the Amityville Horror House or some other houses that have been in the market over the years and we click on archives. So if you wanna see how many times that property was listed, then what you would do is, I'm not gonna do one, you would put the address in here, okay? And it would come up with all the MLS numbers for it. Interesting stuff. So thanks for asking that question in there. Now, if you meet a buyer or they call you up on the phone or you go to a coffee shop or it's your next door neighbor or it's your relative and they want you to send them listings automatically, this is called a prospect match prospect search. It's very simple. What you do is you can be on the phone with them, okay? You could be texting them, whatever you want to do. What are you looking for? You looking for a house, condo? What are you looking for? Um, I'm looking for a house and, you know, I only have a certain amount of money in a certain area. Okay, so where do you want to live? Um, and they tell you or the zip code, I'll just put a zip code and make it easier. This is like the Patchog area where I grew up. All right, oh, I can put a few zip codes in. There's a couple of zip codes, make it easier. And then we put in their criteria. You know, I really have to have three bedrooms and I have to have at least two baths. Okay, so we put that in. I don't even max it out to get the style, okay? Unless they, some of the agents don't know what style they're putting in. I'm going to leave it out for now. Uh, but have that, I need a price. The most they can pay is like 550 max. I probably would put in a minimum here or two just so we don't they don't get something that they're, they're not interested in. I did four to four five fifty. All right. I did two baths, three beds, four to five fifty. I don't go too much into anything else because they might miss out on something good. If they want an extra apartment in there, they would put a two family in here, okay? Only got one, so I'm taking that out. 
I probably need to put more area in. So if I press submit, I'm not going to be able to create the prospect. This right here, this green check mark is how you create the prospect where they're going to get automatic emails from you. It is the quickest, easiest way to make that connection with a buyer. Um, you click here. You put their name in. You put their email in. They're going to get a customer full. We like that with the photos if you want that. Here's a spouse. They want the listings too. You can put a separate email in here. And then it goes out after midnight. You can, you can put a little personal message to them if you want. Otherwise, Stratus has this default message that goes out. Um, you might have a new subject line up here, like some new listings or whatever. And then you save them. That's it. That's all you do. Okay? That's all you do. This is recorded, like I said, so you will be able to watch me do that again. Here, let me save one. You know what? I saved them for myself, and I'm always getting these emails. I call it Billy Buyer. Billy Buyer. And then I put him down here again. Billy, Billy and Millie Buyer. And then their email. All I need is their email. Gmail. Gmail.com. And save. So now they're getting emails from you every day. Okay, listing. So what you could do is you can set it up for yourself and look at them first and send them out if you want to do that. A lot of agents do that too. So that's my prospect match. Uh, any questions? Let me move this up over here. Let me look at you. What do you do if your search count does not come up and you can't see it? Is, is there a setting? Um, that's a really good question too. Michael, is that the same person? I don't know. If you're not getting count, it's probably because you're on a small computer and the sidebar is sidebar is activated and it's pushing the count over off the screen. So my suggestion is, because I do have a MacBook, which is small, and then I have bigger computers. When I'm on the Mac, can't see the count. I toggle this sidebar, see a little thingy here? across the top, and now you'll see your count. That's why. You wanna see the counts, great, in there. All right, um, another highlight is the CMA. Now I'm gonna make it look easy. It's you know not exactly easy to do in Stratus. We do have other CMAs, but I have one partially done already. It's a comparative market analysis to come up with a price for a house or a condo or whatever it is, right? Um, this one here is partially done. Yeah, I'll just show you what I got so far. Now, Stratus has these tabs. When we do add edit for our listing, you're gonna see the same thing. I always say, don't go down, you're gonna get lost. You're not gonna know where you are. You're not gonna know what you're doing, okay? So start with the first one. It's like a page, fill this in. Make sure you fill in the four blue asterisks. Don't know why they're there. It's not a listing, but, and then I put a date in. I don't do anything else, man. I don't fill any of this rest of the stuff in. Save is in the corner. Always save the CMA. Subject property is the property we're trying to get the listing for, right? We're trying to come up with a price. We want maybe doing this on a listing presentation, or sometimes agents will wait and bring it later, whatever. You put in the property details here. The agent is you, just make sure it's all correct. Cover letter comes up automatically with the address, your picture, their names, the whole thing in here. Um, cover, a oh, cover page, sorry. Cover letter you get also. I'll show you all this after. Now the comparable is the most important, important thing. Most important, okay? The similar houses, what are similarly on the market and what's selling? That's what we're going to do. So I only have closed in here. These are all sold, but I want to add in available. So I'm going to show you how to do that using the listing cart because I kind of think that's a great way to do it. So I'm going to get out of the CMA for a minute. Leaving. So this is a four bedroom cape in Lebanon, um, Valley Stream. The four bedroom cape that I'm doing the CMA for. So I want to see what's on the market that's similar. 
Okay, so this is what we do. I do a search to house and I put the town in Valley Stream. Uh, there are three school districts there, so I have to be careful with that. We'll check that after. It's a cape. In this case, I'm going to use the style cape, and it's four bedrooms. Sometimes I put them in, sometimes I don't. I'm going to do, I'll do it for this one, four. I got 24. But Valley Stream's big. It's really big. So I need to see where they are. I put them all on the map. Okay, and I have a tool up here for that. So you can do this without even doing a CMA. I did, I just did this in my class yesterday. I said, let, let's see what's sold or let's see what's on the market by your house. So this is the area. All of these are cape, four bedroom capes that are on the market. Now, there's a lot of space here. So I have an address of this property. It's not on the market, but I'm trying to get the listing for it, which I'm not making this up, but it is a real house. We're going to go to locations. This button is so, so important. It is where I'm going to find the house. And the house is 32 Drake Street, Valley Stream. Make sure you put the town in again. I did this for my house. So I live in Bellport. I find out what's on the market, throw it on the map, go to locations, put my address in, and see what competitions around me. And you get this blue push pin. Do you see it on the map here? So that's the guy's house I'm doing the CMA for. So I want to pick some of these capes over here to put in my CMA that are similar. They're all four bedroom capes. This is the way I do it. There are other ways to do it. Is I point and I check the box. I kind of see what they look like. I can open them up later. You want to kind of look at them, um, you know, in more detail than I am. Let's see, should, this one might be, how much are these houses? They're all about the same price, which is great. Okay, um, I'm gonna put them, now if I go back to my list, and remember, this is really highlighting things in Stratus and not teaching you, because I'm going fast, because I'm moving around, just showing you what's available. So everything I checked on the map, I checked here, and I add them to my cart. I created a cart for 32 Drake Street Valley Stream. Now, once they're in the cart, the CMA is easy because I can just empty the cart. So let me go back to my CMA, which is partially done, right? Because I did that ahead of time so that I could show you. And I go all the way over to comparables. There are buttons here. A lot of agents, which is fine, search the listings inside the CMA. Searching for public records is a different way. Adding by MLS number. It's just tricky because you can make a mistake with the numbers. Um, add from listing card. This is new in this version. I pick my 32 Drake Street and I add to my CMA. And here are the ones. The A's mean available, which means on the market. So you kind of put a little bit of everything into your CMA. I didn't put expireds in or pendings. We're just going to do these. So, and I press save. So, what does this thing look like? You need to go to the end and you can go to print. Now, you can print it, you can email it because maybe this guy's from Manhattan. I want to send it to him. He's not, but maybe. Um, and this is sharing with Collab, but you probably don't know yet. So let me go to print. It's a really simple looking CMA, but what I would say is, if you complicate things with the seller, a lot of them want statistics. Some of them get afraid with all those numbers. Um, you got to kind of feel them out and see. This is just simple, right? not complicated. You get a nice little title page. You get a little cover letter. You get a table of contents. Um, this is the guy's sub house. His pictures came in. And you get side by sides his property or her property compared to the ones that I picked on the map. These are called side by side. But the most important part of the Stratus CMA is this page. It is the summary report that will give me the average selling prices, which are over a six, 618, and the average on the market, which is really close here, 621. They're usually always a little bit more. So based on whatever 
condition analysis or talk to your broker or other professionals to see what the price is at. You know, the homeowner will have their own idea, um, but then you could put a suggested price up here, kind of how Stratus works. And then you get these customers, mediums. These are medium, like they're half sheets. You get a map with the comps. I like the map. See, the SP is the subject property. And these numbers on the map are reflective down here. So what listings I picked. And they get a chart. So it's really basic CMA. I do have um, some recorded webinars on how to do that. My time is just ticking by, but I'm staying with you. All right, take a deep breath. Wow, there's a lot in here. Now, how do we put a listing in once you get a listing? Now, um, and you have to attach it to the public records. I'm gonna show you something that I suggest to the agents. In the one key MLS links, there's something called MLS forms. We have a program called Instanet, which is our electronic signatures and forms. We send out the whole packet. That's a whole different thing. But if you need a quick form, these are new forms, they're here, they're free. But the one that I wanna show you is the property data section. There's one for condos, rental, land, and commercial. This will help you put your listings in. They are nine pages now. This is fillable, so I can type on this if you want to. Uh, you would fill this out. I would take this to the homeowner's house. You can write on it if you want, because the listing almost looks exactly like this form. And how are you going to know all those little things that are in this form unless you go to the house and talk to the homeowner? Like what is included in the sale? What is excluded in the sale? So I would say print this out. Now, I'll just tell you this. You can have the homeowner sign this. However, the MLS tells me that they would never ask you for this so not to worry about it. It's really like a cheat sheet for your listing. That's what I would do. Take it with me, okay? And I found it on the right in the one key MLS links, MLS forms, right? So that, that'll that help you with this because the listings have a lot of detail. So we're listing a house. I'm gonna list my house, you ready? I'm going into, oops, we're going into listing, add, edit. And my house is a house, so I'm doing residential. And look at all the counties here we have now, okay? If you go to public records too, you have all of these counties. We're, um, I live in Suffolk, so I'm going to do Suffolk, and I'm going to link, this is what this is asking you, link my house or the listing to the public record. So I live in Bellport. Now, less is more in here, believe me. Um, I can go by owner's name. I'm going to put the address in, 18. I live on a drive. Um, Oops, I put 18 in the wrong place. 18 goes in street number. Easy to make a mistake. I live on Maplewood Drive, but I don't put drive in because I'll get zero. Just put the name of the street in, okay? Just put the name of the street in. I got one. If I type drive, I'm going to get Zippo. I'm going to press submit. So what I do is, okay, this is my public record. There are buttons at the bottom. Do you see here? So I check it and link with listing. Now, because this is recorded, you can always go back when you're putting a listing in, if you forgot how to do it, and watch me. And link with listing. This is gonna add the block section lot into your listing that you don't know anyway. It will also add in the school districts. See all the stuff that it added in? So I'm in a listing. I'm not actually gonna list my house. So you can, you can do this part because if you don't, fill in every blue asterisk, it's not going to submit it anyway. And every blue star has to be filled in. Um, now, I'm going to go over time because we didn't see my screen at the beginning. So hang in there with me just so I can show you some of this stuff. Uh, here's the school district information. This is new. Like, we never had all of this. Close to par, close to... Put this in, right? 
if you're close to the railroad or something, that might be really desirable. So you want to put these, you can check more than one. For me, it, my house is close to the schools. It's close to parks. It's close. It's on a cul-de-sac. I, I check more than it's close to the shops. I check more than one thing. And then you just go down to each section. Um, here's the tax information. Uh, here is your listing date and expired date that has to be entered in, styled, a lot of boxes. Fill in more than the minimum so your listings stand out to the consumers because a lot of, a lot of agents just don't, they do bare minimum, bare. And you go through what's included in the sale, what's excluded in the sale. Um, this is fairly new too. Level one has a kitchen. Maybe it has a granite countertop bar. I can type that in. Level one also has a living room. I could put that in um, a family room. I, I could do that. Uh, level two. I would put it, I have three, four bedrooms on level two. I would just put four bedrooms here. I don't have to, but this is new. So you don't have to put all those abbreviations in into your listing. Now, as you're going through this, and especially if you're new, you go, oh my gosh, I'm getting overwhelmed now. If you save it as a draft, it's not a listing, it's not out there. You can always come back and finish it or have somebody look at it first if you want to. A draft stays in there for 21 days before Stratus will delete it. So maybe you didn't get the listing yet. Maybe you're just getting ready to get the listing. It doesn't hurt you to put the stuff in, right? You can always edit it, but don't submit it until you're ready to go. Um, after they sign the contract, you have 24 hours then to submit the listing, as you know. So um, let me go over to photos. because We see some really bad photos out there. You can put 36 photos into your listings now. Great, huge. And it doesn't have to be the first picture of the front of the house. It doesn't have to be the front of the house to be the first picture until you sell it. So you take your pictures or you have a professional take the pictures and you, I'm just picking whatever I have on my computer here. I'm holding the control key. On Mac, you would hold the command key down to upload photos. I don't, even know. I don't have anything really great here, but let me show you what I got. And then upload your photos. So this is a nice one. Pick that one. And then open and it, they upload. Doesn't matter the order because you can drag these things around. So it, here's a nice one. Drag it over there. I want that to be the first picture. Um, I can put comments in. Here is a big, now you're going to walk away with this knowledge, okay? Many of the pictures are not filling in. Have you noticed? They're like this, they're like this. They're not filling the whole frame in. Now, these pictures are not terrible, but let's look at this first one. It's not filling in the whole frame. And that's what this little asterisk is telling me. What you do is you click on the picture. Isn't this pretty? And you crop it. So I can move it over, I can leave it and apply. It will fill in the whole entire frame. You see that? That looks so much nicer. So if you do have a listing out there, um, you go, click it on it, crop it, apply, save, fills it in. Cool, right? This one is so dark, I don't even know what's going on. I guess it's a movie theater. Uh, you can brighten them up a little bit. Maybe just a little bit will help. And I saw a picture today when I was looking before I did the webinar. The house was like this. I mean, does the agent look at their listing? It was sideways like this, upside down or something. So make sure you can load, you can rotate it back, okay? And then fix it. So keep your pictures up to date. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, I'm almost finished. Hold on. Attachments. This is how they attach the surveys, the disclosures. The floor plans at the but uh, makes your listing even more interesting. Flood zone reports, anything like that that you want to attach, they put. If I'm attaching something to my listing, maybe it's a survey. Let's just make believe this is a survey. I would tell tell people what it is. It's a survey. These numbers tell me nothing. 
or you can type in here if you want to, okay? I see numbers all the time, but you wanna know what it is that's attached to the listing. See, so you can pick these or you can type in here. Uh, flood zone reports are uploaded here. And then here is your map with your, make sure your dots on your house, which it is here. You can preview the listing and okay. So I save it as a draft, now what? Well, I, I need somebody to look at it. My broker has to look at this with me before you submit it. Do not submit a listing that has mistakes or incomplete. Um, in Ed Edit, here's the drafts. They used to call them worksheets, now they're drafts. So today at 105, I did this, okay? So I would go in, nobody sees that, but you, it's like, you know, doing a draft or a paper or something. Then I can finish it up. And when I'm ready, I submit the listing, get my MLS number, and it's out there for everybody to see. Okay. Now in my support center, there is help in here. Here's recorded webinars. Let me show you this. So my intention for this class was just to show you the highlights of Stratus. But you can come in here and take, here's an intro to Stratus. It's one hour. This is, I did this last year, same stuff. Um, but you can take that recording as many times as you want, okay? Over and over, you don't even have to put your name in. Intermediate Stratus is an hour, which does CMAs and comping. I do some market analysis. Take that if you want. These two are probably more valuable to you than the advanced Stratus at this point, but then we have other ones in here too. So those are where you can get your help. All right, I took, I went over time. I apologize from the beginning. I didn't know that was happening. But um, anyway, everybody, happy new year. Happy, healthy new year. A lot of success to you. And uh, take some one of my classes. Here's my email, lzarba at larealtor.com. I'm Lauren Zarba. And you can just um, shoot me an email if you need some advice on some some classes. I'm not as good at, you know, the Department of State stuff as the education department. Um, you can call them and they're really, they, they know all about that. Anyway, happy new year, everybody. And I hope to see you soon.